It's Demon Souls time! Hello and welcome to another figure view. Today we're gonna have a look at the Figma number 590 from Demon Souls. It's the fluted armor in the PS5 version. I gotta be straight up honest with you guys, I've never played a Souls game because I'm too scared and they're hard and I just really don't have the patience to sit through a boss fight that goes on for hours. They're great games, I've seen a lot of people play them, seen a lot of people stream them, and it's cool. But why do you even buy this figure if you don't, if you're not in invested in the games? Because it's damn sexy. Look at all the detail on this knight armor and the amount of accessories that he comes with is quite frankly insane. And at first I thought this figure was a brick, but I've seen some people unpack and I see some people play around a bit and it seems to be a good one. So let's have a look at it. Is it just me or is he a tiny bit small? I mean, you be the judge of that. Maybe they were trying to make it realistic. So the proportions are not as anime as I'm used to with like uh, all the other Figma characters you got. 16 centimeters to the top of the hat, which means we are going up to 6.3, almost four inch tall size comparisons. Here's Dalter, the SH figure art, Son Goku, Naka Michelangelo, Figma Goblin Slayer, also from Figma, Guts from Berserk, and Garbage from Berserk, and Darkseid. Overall look and detail, and I think that's really one of the parts where the figure shines, and no pun intended. First things first, the armor is shiny, but they didn't go, um, you know, crazy with it. They didn't put like metallic, put, uh, they didn't put like tons of sparkles in it. Obviously giving it a lot more of a realistic look, which I'm not really that used to, especially with Figma figures, which is usually based on anime and stuff. So I think they did this one beautifully. Now, one thing that's kind of weird is uh, there's tons of black wash also on the figure, which gives it in a dirt effect in some places and in other places it's there to bring out the detail especially if you look at here in the helmet since you have all these bag parts it makes it look a lot more vibrant makes it look uh, a lot more cool and standing out so you get a better look at the detail also have a lot of little bit of battle damage actually but back to the black wash real quick there's not really that much on the figure itself so not really giving it that dirty look but I feel like there's tons of it on the cloth under there, which makes it feel kind of weird. How did dirt go over there and not go on there? Uh, there's also tons of it on the feet, which does make sense since you're trampling through a lot of sewers and stuff. So that's fine by me. But back to the detail at hand. Once again, the black wash really pop, makes it pop over there. Not so much in the chest area, but still looking good. Also, the belt buckles, everything is nicely painted and everything going on under there. Scarf going around the neck, beautifully molded and also painted. A little bit of black wash on there. The chain mail under the chest area is amazing looking and also the bells. I really, the paint job is exquisite on this guy. I got some gold, but once again, nothing too shiny, nothing that pops out too much. Then we have this floaty piece down there, which I kind of wish it was connected somewhere because it's a little bit too floaty and you can't you try to push on it, but it doesn't really rest. So. I mean, if you're getting into pose, I guess it's maybe better that you can move it around a little bit, but still. Also, we have some more black wash on the hands. Those look fairly dirty. As we move down to his leg armor, more belts going on. And you can already tell probably that there's a lot of articulation points. It really played around with that, but we'll have a look at that in a second. I mean, it's just breathtaking, honestly. Like, the look of this figure is amazing. It's as good as it was in the shots. I don't really have any complaints. Maybe the dirt effect is kind of random, but still, I mean, he looks great and he will have a presence on your shelf. And the next very interesting part I feel like about this figure is the articulation. Because once again, looking at it, I'm thinking like, oh, this is a brick. Probably don't have any articulation here and there. And I feel like they, they did it very smartly. I mean, they played around with the sculpt without breaking it, because like, you know, no ugly um, app crunch or whatever to break up this beautiful chest piece. So, starting off with the hat, we do have some very good back and forth motion, but as you can tell, the neck is already moving with it. This entire piece in the neck area is probably just on the ball, so you can bring that to the back and also forward, and uh, have some side to side wiggling on the hat and also on the neck part. Not too much, but it's obviously blocked by the scarf. Now the shoulder pads, are connected via a very very tiny ball joint 
in the back. Unfortunately, can't really rotate it out as much, so upward movement isn't great. I don't want to break it, but try to move this out of the way. It doesn't really work because the pack in there is super, super small. I can't. I don't know if you can see it, but it's directly connected. If you would have added a longer pack, it would have been better. Now for the shoulder itself, can move that back and forth. Doesn't have up and down movement, can't really shift it that much. But still, I mean, back and forth is nice. We also have a bicep swivel, nicely hidden on both sides. We also have one over here. And if you're wondering over the other shoulder pad, it's the same, same thing, same procedure. Then we have these big double hinged elbows on the Figma. Oh, I know, right? Hand is on the ball hinge, bring that back and forth, also swivel. The chest area, and by the way, all the joints are pretty nice, crisp, and uh, stay in place, except for this one. We have a dumbbell joint in there, and this piece in particular, this connection is quite awful. Still, you can tell, have some nice back and forth movement, side to side also, and obviously can be swiveled, and now also getting it back into place is a bit of a beach. But anyway, uh, we have the lower half, let me get this off so I can demonstrate. Have a tiny bit of side to side wiggle motion, but you can rotate it. This is floaty as we established. Let me take that off as well so we have a better look at the detail in there. Legs, you have this entire kind of rope thing, which still gets in the way even though it's cut up, but you do have some forward movement out to the side. Isn't really that great because the entire sculpt is blocking. Should have probably freed it up a little bit more in the upper half. And backward movement is uh, non-existent. Does he have a butt in there? What's going on on low half? Yeah, it does have the butt more. So now having another look at the instructions, you actually have a little bit of a moving hip joint. So you can pull the legs down. This one works. This one even doesn't work. I couldn't find that. I didn't figure that out before because it's so stiff. But I mean, that's cool. So <laughs> while this disconnects already again, so we do get a little bit of more movement out of the legs for the forward movement. Still nothing really in the backwards department, but out to the side. It's a little bit, it does something, I guess. A thigh swivel, beautifully hidden and very stiff. Double hinged knees, once again with the double hinges, not used to that. And the foot is on a pretty big ball hinge, so you can bring that back and forth. Also does to the side to side, and we also get a toe hinge for this one, which is fairly loose, but it's there. And then let's get to the, quite frankly, ridiculous arsenal. First and foremost, I'm gonna get the boring stuff out of the way. You got the Figma back, which is included with every Figma ever. Then you also have the display stand, which is also included with every Figma ever. You have this piece on top, which you can switch out. You don't have to use that one. But you also have an extra piece, which is specifically for when you want to put the shield on his back. It does not have any other connection piece, so you can connect that to the base. If you don't want to use the base, you can still have just kind of get this off. Eh. And you still have this. For one for the shield, one for the back of the figure. The camera doesn't want to focus on it, but it's just a piece of seafood plastic. Right, let's also have a look at the hands. We have not the greatest selection, but I guess enough fist hands and open holding hands for swords and shields and whatnot depending on the handle. Now, you got your regular broad sword, which does, this one has a, um, all the swords I think have some battle damage. Also, the shine on there is nice. You have some more black wash, makes it look dirty. And the handle, fairly simple, good looking. Also, you have a sheathed version of the smaller swords. This is actually the wrong one. Never mind. he has the broad sword with just a brown leather, leathery looking sheath. And uh, same handle. Can connect it to the figure, by the way, with this little pack hole you have in the belt. Put it on there. Then we have the Night Sword, which looks a lot more prestigious with some more gold on there. Man, I love the mold on the handle in general. And as you can tell, there's also some damage in there, which is intended, obviously. But uh, we also have a sheathed version, same sword, same handle but much more detail on there. Beautiful looking, especially on the tip over here, silver and gold. Mwah. We also have his regular kite shield, which uh, the paint on the dragon looks messy, but again, I think that's on purpose. I mean, it overlooks good with some more 
damage on there, and some more black wash around it, and the handle in the back, and the whole the handle, all the handles you can take them off. Obviously, if you want to connect it to the back, the handle will get in the way, and also makes it easier to uh, attach to the hand. Then we have the Dark Silver Shield, and what a fitting name that is, because it's so and it's very dark. They really went ham with the black wash on there, but still, look at how it elevates the mold, the sculpt. It's absolutely fantastic, man. And it's huge! Some more detail in the back if you haven't had enough of that. Oh my god, I love the handles also, by the way, on there. Still great looking piece. Then, uh, one of my favorites, um, uh, the Meat Cleaver. Tons of damage on there. Looks dark. I almost wish there was a little bit of blonde on there, but it looks kind of worn, looks kind of bronze, like uh, it's worn out from murdering so many weird creatures. And we also have the uh, Iron Knuckle. You only got one, I think you got two if you got like the uh, Good Small exclusive bonus, which is so stupid. You have the thing, why don't you put it in there twice? But yeah, it's a meat cleaver. Um, no, not meat cleaver, Iron Knuckle. But still, cool looking. And finally, the big, large sword of Moonlight. Uh, by the way, I just read off all these names. If I confuse any of the swords with what it's supposed to be like let me know in the comments i'm just got, i just got the names and i looked at the swords and i was like bam that's probably what this is because this is oh my god so much gold on there with a little ruby and blue it's kind of see-through or not really it's really shiny really glossy a big contrast to all the other weapons but still very cool looking Final thoughts! Playability for this character, 0 out of 10, because I got my hair dry over here, and you're gonna need that if you want to put this guy into any kind of poses, because the hands are so damn tough that you barely get anything into that. And also, one broke off clean of the hand holding thing. Yeah, which one is it? Yeah, there we go. Tried to get this out for I don't know how long. That's not the right one, but uh, where was it? This one. It's all mangled and whatnot. I don't know, I kind of guess I have to drill a new hole into that. I tried heating it up and pulling this out, but it didn't work. So yeah, other than that, the hand that's holding on to the shield is kind of wobbly, not great. So I mean, playing around takes a lot of time and patience. So be aware of that. <sighs> I'm honestly a little bit annoyed now, but let me get back to the task at hand. This figure looks amazing. The mold on it is absolutely beautiful. I I love that they went for a lot more of a really realistic look. The paint job on there, very shiny but not too shiny. I love the black wash on there also. Could be, could have used a little bit more. And the articulation, I mean they really stepped it up. It's still fairly lacking in like the leg department and like the chest popping off and whatnot. But still, this feels like a figure arts. Because figure arts usually excels at making articulation for like specific molds and specific characters. And Figma in that department is a lot lazier for the most part. But I feel like they really brought out the best and brightest to get this guy into some cool poses. And overall, finally the price point, yeah, this one is pretty damn expensive. However, considering what you're getting, like all the different accessories, all these weaponries, and a beautiful, stunningly looking figure on top of it. I think it's worth it for me, except for the small hiccups here and there, but I don't want to discredit the figure and the accessories because I have so much trouble getting the hands on there and the swords on there. But yeah, that's just something to keep in mind. Still, really recommend this one because it is a beautiful unique looking piece that will stand out in any kind of collection that's gonna do it guys as usual thank you very much for watching don't forget if you enjoyed this review hit it up with a like and subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for more figures card game stuff and whatever the fluted armor wants